Hello Apex Entrepreneurs and welcome to this video. If you're a beginner and you want to learn how to invest in stock markets, then this video is definitely for you. Some people think that investing in stock markets is difficult and it requires a lot of research and dedication. Some other people think that stocks are risky and they prefer not to invest, so they keep their money in savings accounts. The sad truth is that if you keep your money in a savings account, inflation will eat it and your purchasing power will deteriorate. In this video, we will show you the top eight tips to teach you how to invest in stock markets and make money while spending no more than one hour per month. Yeah, you heard that right. One hour per month. This video is extremely important if you want to make passive income from stock market investing. So please watch it till the end. Take notes and smash that like button if you're enjoying it so far. So, are you ready? Let's start. Tip number one, always be disciplined and invest in the long term. I understand that many of you guys want to make money so fast and that's really normal. Humans are by nature greedy and they want to make money fast. A lot of beginners make this mistake. They buy a stock and then when they see that they have already made 20 bucks, they sell it and celebrate, thinking that they can replicate this behavior as much as they want. Unfortunately, that's wrong. Nobody can predict the future with accuracy in the short term. Nobody. There are a lot of fluctuations and news that you can't control and that influence the stock market prices. So, the best thing is to bet on the long term. Warren Buffett once said, only buy something that you'd be perfectly happy to hold if the market shut down for 10 years. So, you have to invest in safe companies with big capitalizations that you think will still be competitive in 10 years. Take Coca-Cola as an example, which is the world's largest beverage company. Although we saw huge crashes in 1999 because of the dot-com bubble, and in 2008 because of the subprime mortgage crisis, and in 2020 because of the recent crisis, we can see that the stock is increasing in value if we look at it from a long-term perspective. You could have more than doubled the value of your investment had you invested in Coca-Cola 12 years ago. So, always think about the long-term value of your investment. Now, back to our tips. Tip number two, invest in companies that have a solid track record of dividends. For those who don't know, a dividend is a sum of money that the company pays to its shareholders, and usually it is a distribution of profits. So some companies give their shareholders a part of their profit to reward them for holding the shares. In this type of company, you should invest because you will be getting dividends every quarter or sometimes every month. If you want to know more about dividends, we already uploaded a complete guide that will explain to you everything about dividends. You can click here to watch it after you finish this video. Let's go back to our first example, Coca-Cola. If we go to their website, we can see that they have a solid track record of dividend distribution. So even during the violent crisis of 2008, Coca-Cola distributed dividends to shareholders. The average return on investment of Coca-Cola dividends is near 3%, which is better than most savings accounts. So if you invested in Coca-Cola, in addition to 6% average growth in the stock price in the last 10 years, you'll also get a 3% dividend. So, almost 9% average return on investment per year, which is more than great. Let's move to tip number three, which is the most important tip in this video. And you should definitely follow it, so take notes. Tip number three is, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. And no, it's not a joke. By subscribing to this channel, you'll have access to a lot of videos that will help you invest wisely and master your personal finance and make money while you sleep. We have a complete playlist on investing, so don't hesitate to devour it. You'll find the link in the description. Tip number four, reinvest your dividend. So let's say you invested $10,000 on a stock that gives you a 5% return on investment in a year. So after one year, you got $500 of dividends. Instead of taking this $500 and buying stupid liabilities like a new fancy handbag or a new iPad, reinvest this $500 by buying more shares of the same stock. If you reinvest your dividend, next year you'll be going to earn 5% of the $10,000 you originally invested, plus the $500 you earned the first year. 
so you'll be making 5% of $10,500, which is equal to $525. You see, your annual income increased by $25, and now your capital is $10,500 plus $525, equaling $11,025. If you keep reinvesting your dividend, you're gonna profit from the power of compound interest. The amount of money you'll be making out of dividends will grow following an exponential curve. And at some point, instead of making only $500 per year out of your initial $10,000, you'll be making $1,000 a year, or maybe $2,000 a year, if you keep them for the long term. And now let's move to tip number five, which is diversification. And here comes the famous quote you all know, don't put your eggs in the same basket. And this is a great tip for beginners. If you invested your money in one or two companies, then you are taking a big risk because these companies might go bankrupt and you might lose a lot of money. That's why we recommend you to diversify your portfolio. And one of the most efficient ways to diversify is to buy index funds or ETF. And we recommend you as well to destroy the like button below if you are enjoying this video. Because if you do so, you will help this video reach more people and you will help other beginners to know where they should invest. So for example, let's say you bought the S&P 500 Index Fund. The S&P 500 Index Fund includes the largest American companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange, or NASDAQ. It includes companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, Coca-Cola and Amazon. When you buy an index fund, you are betting on the economy and not on one company. So if one company went bankrupt, there are 499 other companies, and some of them might be performing well enough to protect you from losing your money. The average return on investment on S&P 500 in the last 90 years is 9.8% a year, which is a great way to grow your capital. If you think that a certain industry sector will flourish, you can buy ETF that focuses on this sector. For example, if you're an optimist about the energy sector, you can buy an ETF that focuses on the securities of oil, natural gas and alternative energy companies. This way you are betting on the whole sector and not on one company. And this will reduce a lot of your risk. Now let's move on to tip number six. Do not speculate. A lot of people love to speculate in order to make money as quickly as possible. And one of the most speculative industries is the tech industry. A lot of new companies are going public every month for example, if you're a tech geek and you understand very well what you're doing, then why not invest in this type of company? You can make a lot of money. But if you're a beginner, we don't recommend you do so, because in the tech industry, it's very difficult to predict which company will flourish and which company will vanish. What could be considered as a promising technology now could end up failing two years from now because of another more powerful technology. So unless you know exactly what you are doing, Stay away from speculation. Let's move on to tip number seven. Buy when everybody else is selling. During a crash, people get scared and they want to protect their investment. So they rush to sell their stocks, even at a loss, in order to avoid losing more money. And this will drive the stock downward. But if you understand economic cycles, you know that sooner or later the market will recover. Take an example of the NASDAQ index. Even if you bought all your stock on the 10th of March 2000, which is the very worst moment to buy stocks in history, you would have recovered 15 years later. So, don't be afraid to buy when everybody is selling, because if the companies you are buying are solid, they will definitely go up with time. Eighth and last tip for this video is to never invest less than $500 at a time. This tip is very important, especially for beginners who tend to invest in small amounts. Every time you invest, there are fees you pay for your broker. It depends on your broker, but the fees could vary between $2 and $50. So let's say you invested $200 on a stock and you paid $10 fees. Well, that's a 5% automatic loss on your share that you might have to wait one year or two to compensate. But if you invested $2,000 and paid $10 transaction fees, then you only lost 0.5%, which is much easier to compensate. So do not ever invest less than $500 on a stock. These are our top eight tips to invest. If you find them interesting and helpful, share this video with others so you can help them as well. 
Before leaving, we invite you to visit the description below, where you'll find many resources to help you make money from the comfort of your couch. You'll find the books that we recommend to help you acquire the right mindset for success, a free video course that will teach you how to generate passive income and how to create a six figures online business and much more. By the way, if you're still here while the music is running, here are two videos that you'll love watching. The first one will show you a summary of the greatest investment book of all time, The Intelligent Investor. And the second one will teach you how to become a millionaire in your 20s or early 30s. Just click on either one of them on the screen right here. Others with a more secular approach who have also been very successful. Let's take Warren Buffett of Omaha, Nebraska. If you had put $10,000 in 1965 into his company, Berkshire Hathaway, you would have one million today. Warren was a chapter in my 1972 book, Super Money, so I've known him a long time. He learned his trade with Ben Graham, the original dean of security analysis at Columbia University. I don't think Warren has ever been on television until this interview, and he has certainly never courted publicity, but recently he got a lot of it when he emerged as the key figure in the takeover of ABC by Capital Cities. Warren will be the largest shareholder of the new company, and his own net worth is now far in excess of $500 million. But when I spoke with him last fall in his office in Omaha, he very characteristically made his investment style seem so perfectly simple. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd, because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two. And they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane... Uh, 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 methods of, of, of approaching that, but uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. The, the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether uh, you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. It, all the ticker tells me is the price, yeah. and I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high. But, but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business, but the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation and then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. So Buffett chose to stay in this world, Omaha, Nebraska, where corn grows just minutes from downtown. Now, Omaha is a nice town, but nobody claims it's a world financial center. Here, the only thundering herd is actually on four feet. Don't you find Omaha a little bit off the beaten track for the investment world? Well, believe it or not, uh, we get mail here, and uh, we get periodicals, and we get all the facts needed to make decisions. And unlike Wall Street, you'll notice we don't have 50 people coming up and whispering in our ear that we should be doing this or that this afternoon. You appreciate the lack of stimulation I like, here? I, I like the lack of stimulation. We get facts, not stimulation here. <laughs> How can you stay away from Wall Street? Well, if I were in Wall Street, I'd probably be a, a lot poorer. At, uh, uh, you get overstimulated in Wall Street, and uh, uh, you hear lots of things, and, and you, you, may, you may shorten your focus, and a short focus uh, is not conducive to, uh, to long profits. And, uh, here I can just focus on what businesses are worth. And I don't need to be uh, in Washington to figure out what the Washington Post 
uh, newspaper is worth, and I don't need to be in New York to figure out what uh, some other company is worth. It's, it's, it's simply, it's an intellectual process. Well, and uh, and the, less, the less static there is in that intellectual process, really the better off you are. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is, is defining your level, uh, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence, finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value. But what? there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't. In 30 years of investing, not one? I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great. company. I mean, it's a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on, and you're not going to be it's a participant. gone right past me. <laughs> Is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> Arthur, I don't have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do. I don't, you know, I, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about, and that may be too bad. But uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily. And you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, the, nothing is forced upon you. So you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you got a strike call on you. If you get too many call on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, US Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches, and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. Isn't that boring? It would, it would bore most people, and, and certainly boredom is a, is, a, is a problem with most professional money managers. If they, if they, if they try to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients are start, yelling, they start yelling, swing you bum, you know, from the, from the stands, and that's very tough for people to do. Warren, your, your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. That, uh, the academics, for example, focus on, on uh, um, all kinds of variables. Partly uh, because by academics, you mean uh, professors of right, finance? Right, yeah, the, the and data business, is there. In business school? Sure, the, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years. Uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies, there are all these variables because the data are there. And, and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says to, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And once you have these skills, you just are, are, are dying to, uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. Uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of businesses. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Tips Thursday. Those of you who are new, uh, remember to hit the subscribe button okay, and click on the notification bell so that you can get notified on any upcoming content and you can learn a lot of cool things, okay? So right, today I'm going to share with you guys about the power of starting early. And I have a special guest to share with you guys why you should start investing early. So this guy, right, actually, right, let me just tell you a bit more about him. He started investing when he was quite young, and now he started from stock investing, now from property investing, and he owns a few businesses. And the best thing, right, and okay, he's only 30 years old and already accomplished so much because the reason, right, because he started early. So let's welcome uh, uh, Bowen here. Okay, hi, Bowen. Hi, so, hello, hello. So, bro, can you just tell me, right, uh, what is the reason behind your success? Before 30, right, you managed to accomplish so, so much, so many things. Okay, so I just want to share, right now I'm 30, I actually started investing at the age of 22 years old. So I think that is a eight years of my life. One of the things that I feel that allows me to, be, to achieve my little success today, I'll say it's because I started very, very early. From age 22 all the way to 25, in fact, I started investing for the first three years and uh, guess what is my return? Okay, it's not positive, it is not even zero, it is... <laughs> it is... Oops! <laughs> so in fact, for the first three years, I actually lost lost money. But I'll say that the three years that I actually lose money allows me or, or rather give me so much experience that uh, it helps me for the next five years uh, of my investment journey. See, even though I, I started making mistakes from 22 to 25, but when I'm ready to actually execute the right technique and everything, I am only 25, which uh, a lot of my peers, they are just out there 
just started working, you know, but I have really gained a very good experience of throughout the, the journey of making mistakes. So you're telling me, right, the, the reason of you being a success, right, because you have time to recover from your mistakes from the stock market, right? Mm. So does that give you a leverage, I would say a leverage point or a tipping yep. point for you to scale on your mistakes and then eventually turn your losses into profits, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. So guys, so do you hear that, okay? So it's because when you start early, you have the liberty of time, right, to recover from your mistakes. Okay, and the best thing right, you also get ahead of a lot of peers and you, by the time you are like maybe 10-20 years down the road you already achieve a lot of things they, they even dreamed of or even live the life you really want to right, dreaming of but you're already living the life, right? So that's the power of starting early and there's a third point right, Lee and Bowman right, we really, really love this thing but right, I'm going to share with you this thing on the next episode so stay tuned, alright guys, so see you